for joining. I have to say, we have made it. We are actually 300 subscribers and counting. And I really wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you tuning into this content, engaging with me. I really, really love you. I thank you so much for supporting me. So today, what I'm going to talk about is handling negativity, the negativity of visibility. So I've been talking, come out of your shell, you know, bring your beautiful brilliance, bring your product, bring your service out into the world because there are people who need you. And that is the truth. People are waiting to hear what you have to say. They're waiting for your services. They're waiting for your products. With that being said, I'll just be honest with you. There are a lot of negative people in the world. And as you start becoming more visible, you see, if nobody knows you, who could say anything bad about you, right? But as you become more visible, people start having an opinion about who you are, what you're saying, how you're showing up. And unfortunately, a lot of these comments are negative. So you know I'm a holistic nurse and you know I got some tips and tricks to share because I don't want you to stop, okay? So the first thing that I wanted to share was to remember when somebody talks to you, when somebody says something to you, whether that be in the negative, positive, or just plain apathetic, remember that people are projecting their words and they're speaking from their own consciousness. They're speaking from their own experience. And unfortunately, I hate to say this, but a lot of times people are really hard on themselves. They're very negative. The way they speak to themselves, they probably will never consciously speak to another person like that. And a lot of that you know, if a person went through trauma growing up, maybe their parents were negative, maybe their environment was just hard on them. They had to be the best. They had to be perfect. Whatever, Or maybe it's just an internal conversation where they would never do or they can never do what you're doing because they, have, they, they, they can't get past the fear, right? So the, the, the same voice that holds them back is what they will project to hold you back, right? Maybe you didn't say something, you know, just being honest on YouTube, like if I don't say Jesus and every second I talk about God, you know, you get these Jesus people <laughs> like, what, Jesus, don't forget about Jesus. I'm just being, and I understand, and I have the most love for them because I understand I understand that people project onto me, onto you from their own consciousness. And when you understand that when these negative thoughts are coming, it's actually how that person feels and views themselves, you're going to not take it so personally, right? My second point, I'm trying to stay, I'm trying to stay under 20 minutes for this. My second point is, Remember, when you get on a platform like YouTube, when you get onto the internet, there are 8 billion people living in the world. 8 billion people, right? How many people, even at your maximum, how many people do you think your product and services are geared to, right? It, not million, 8 billion. So when you think about, wow, I would say I'm a success if my message reached 3 billion people. That still leaves, let me get my math right, that still leaves 5 billion people that your product and services will never match up in their lifetime, right? So I just have, I use that as a perspective or as a way to say when you get visible, right? Even at the height of your success, there will still be people who don't agree with you, who will never use your product, who don't care for your service, who don't care for the way you talk, who don't care for the way you operate. There will still be a large amount of people that just what you do just don't resonate with them. And this is why I talk about purpose, because remember, you are becoming visible, not to compete with somebody, you are becoming visible so that you can fulfill that purpose inside of you. So just remembering this purpose inside of you also has 
a specific line of people that it's supposed to serve. And sometimes I hate to break it to you. It might not be your friends and family. And a beautiful way to see who your purpose is intended to serve as a business owner is when you charge your prices and when you raise your prices. There are some people because of who you are, you know, there are so many subconscious prejudices and biases that some people will just never buy anything from you because they don't see you as valuable. They might like you, they might appreciate you, but they're just not going to put you and value in the same line, and they will never purchase anything from you. That is just a fact. I'm telling it to you, not to discourage you, but so that you could be aware that that is not the person your purpose to serve. See, we are on a vicious mission right here to find and align with the people that God actually wants us to serve. And in order to do that, when you become visible, you have to encounter some of the people that it's just not in your purpose. As They might like you, they might not like you, they might have all these opinions. They're just not aligned for you to serve. You did not come here to serve them. So in your mind, you kind of have to, you know, like when horses are running, they put on blinders. In your mind, when you're getting visible, you have to put on blinders and you have to see what they call your avatar or that person who is waiting to say, oh my gosh, I was waiting for you to help me plan this event, schedule this task, create this, collaborate. I was waiting for a person like you. You are my who. You are my destiny caller, right? And when you see that person, sometimes you talk to them, you know, like, Kids are getting a little crazy. But sometimes you talk to them. You have conversations with them. You know, sometimes I just sit sit by myself and I say, oh, when I'm in my mansion chilling, I say, I know you were, you existed because you existed in my mind. And I saw you. I saw you pass all those negative comments. And I knew that you were going to rise. And I spoke to you over the internet, right? Despite all the negativity. So I just want to tell you, there is somebody waiting for you and you may have to get through 5, 10, 15, and depending on how high level you are, it might be hundreds. You might be getting hundreds of spammers, scammers, and people who are naysayers. And you just have to get through them because you put your blinders on to see who God sent you to serve, okay? And with that being said, sometimes you put your blinders on and you're like, yeah, I'm prepared. These negative comments, and it might not even be social media. It might just be you handing out your flyer and somebody ring up the face like, what's this about? Or this is not nice. Or this is not clear. You know, just some negative feedback. And you you take it and you're in stride, right? But I just want to say, sometimes it's easy to be like, I know I expected this. That doesn't affect me. But inside it does. Because why? We are human. And as humans, we are social beings, meaning we want, we innately want other people to like us. We want other people to value us. We want other people to validate us, right? So when that doesn't happen, even from a total stranger, right? It, 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 it does something to you, right? It messes with your energy. And worse yet, if it's somebody that you know, like, and trust already, and you would wish that they would have your buy-in, you would wish that they would be the first in line to buy whatever you have, no matter what, right? Because they know your character, they know what you want, you would wish it. But instead, you get disparaging remarks. Not what do you do with the situation, because I already know you, you're already professional, you know how to, you, you, you're very resilient, you know how to combat all of that. But what you do at home when your own insecurities come down on you and you say, should I really have sent that out? Should I really have posted that? Oh my gosh, what happens if they think, oh my gosh, what about my license? Oh my gosh, what do I have? Did I say that correctly? Am I doing things lawfully? Am I doing this the right way? And you have all these millions of your own thoughts coming in. And now it, your own thoughts and your own insecurities is now peering and merging with the negativity, that energy that you got as as in the form of feedback and it's coming on you and it's crushing you. 
there are things that you can do to get rid of that energy. And you might look a little crazy, but I'm telling you, it's well worth it, right? The number one thing I would say is affirmation. You need to combat it out loud. You need to take yourself in front of a mirror and you need to say affirmations. See, if you had a one-on-one -on -one, um, session with me, you know that on the Solex, the scanner app that does your frequencies, we also have a training where it does your own affirmations in your voice to your own frequency music. If you're interested in that, reach out to me. If you don't, if that don't float your boat, it's okay. Get in front of a mirror and in front of the mirror, look yourself, look at yourself dead in the eye and you repeat affirmations, whatever it is. So whatever it is they said, whatever you are going to say to build yourself up, you do it. So if whatever they said made you feel like you're not enough, write it down, go in front of the mirror and say, I am enough right? I am confident. I am, you know, and, and, and don't lie to yourself, right? Don't lie because what they, the feedback could have been very, very constructive, right? But it does not take away from that energy that it's crushing you. So you go in front of the mirror and you tell yourself what you are and who you know yourself to be, right? Sometimes I said, yes, I am wrong, right? I am wrong in this sense. I did not do it the right way. I did not know it the right way, but I am determined to learn to do it the right way. I am confident enough to fail. I will succeed. I will. I am persistent. I will persevere. I am a person of resilience. I will try and try until I succeed. You speak to yourself. And I am telling you, that energy is going to rise up inside of you. And I honestly, I honestly think if you look at my shorts, I honestly think every morning before you get up, just because the level of negativity in this world, every morning, you should be at least, at least one minute in the mirror, speaking to yourself and pumping, priming, and preparing yourself for the day. Because this is war. This is a war. This is a battle between positivity and negativity. And positivity and negativity lies in all of us. But I will tell you, this world has more negativity than positivity because negativity sells, right? It doesn't have to, but it does right? So you have to pump and prime yourself with positivity so that when you hit those bumps of negativity, you're just doing treatments and not pulling yourself off the floor. So that's my first recommendation is affirmations. My second recommendation would be movement. Not if you are a person and you get angry, you might need to go to the gym and work it off. But if you don't have that much time, simple exercise of standing, rooting your feet on the floor and shaking like a, like a, a, a tree that has the leaves just falling off. And what I usually tell myself, I tell myself, I am shaking off all that negative energy. Nothing vigorous, nothing crazy, but light, gentle shaking. And you can feel that energy coming off. Another movement that you can use, usually behind our neck, we use the, we we usually hold stress there. And a, a technique that I use, I took it from Qigong, is actually taking your hand, putting it at one side of your neck, and then coming all the way down your body, and then with your hand doing this flickering motion, flickering off. So from one side to another, you flicker it off. And you're basically, what you're doing is you're allowing the energy to cross in the correct way, but you're also symbolically removing that energy that is piling up. Yes, I have a toddler. <laughs> so yes, so you actually, you're, you're taking it and you're actually removing the energy off of you. And what that does, it clears your energy. If you have your frequency scanner, I would definitely say 
do your beats, really find a, um, do an assessment to find out what your true emotions are. Don't lie to yourself, right? Sometimes certain things, even though it's true, it can be very hurtful to you, depending on where you are, right? We're just humans. So do your scanner. If you don't have a scanner, you can always make an appointment with me. We could do a one-on-one, -on -one, find out where your emotions are, and then you know and you have your, your music, your beats curated to you to align your frequency so that you feel refreshed. Because I'm telling you, if you don't address the energy as you keep going, as you become more and more visible, remember in your sub these these words and these thoughts sink into your subconscious, and your subconscious draws all these things to you. So even though you might say, "Oh, I'm not paying that, I'm not paying that no attention," subconsciously you are. And it can really mess you up in the long run. And eventually, you might have to do like some of these stars and just run away from everybody and everything. And I don't want that for you because you have people here to serve. You have people that really need you, really need your services, really need your products. So take care of your energy, not just your attitude, but your energy. The last thing I would say is... When you have taken care of your energy, practice forgiveness. And for some people, they just say, oh, well, I, don't, I don't even know that person. Like, why do I need to forgive? But I think, I think this is something from the heart, right? When people say things, if you are a person, I know I'm a person that's very empathetic. So I take things straight to my heart. And honestly, when you are showing up on a social media platform with this raw authentic authenticity where you're like, I'm not faking it. You know, you're seeing me like I really am. Like I don't have no makeup on right now. Like I am showing you my genuine you because the people who I need to serve, they need to see. When you show up authentically, your heart is open. And when your heart is open, when you get negativity, it goes straight to your heart. And when it goes straight, to, you can't close your heart because if you close your heart, even though you might be visible on camera, the people who need to see you, they're not going to see you because they're not going to hear that authentic voice that resonates with them, right? So you have to keep your heart open. And in keeping your heart open, something through my practice that I have noticed that keeps your heart open is the act of forgiveness right? So you may need to actually write it down. You don't have to respond to these negative people. You don't have to explain yourself to negative people because doing that, you're trying to get them out of a mindset. That's not your job, but your job to yourself is to forgive them. So you may have just a notebook. You might just actually I buy a little 50 cent, you know, cup composition book from the, the, um, the Walmart or the dollar store. And you just write down and every negative thing that really hits you, you know, sometimes the simplest thing hits you. It might not even have been that big of a deal, but it just hits you a certain way. You just write it down, write a nice letter to them, sending them grace, peace, and love. And you send it knowing that this is the energy you have decided to put out into the world and that is the energy you're looking to come back to you right so in your little book you know just have a have a list and and you say i'm sending you grace peace and love and if you want to explain yourself explain it in there if you want to vent vent in there and then tie it up with grace, peace, and love, or whatever positive emotions you think is good. Because what's going to happen is you, even though they started the interaction, you took charge, you closed it, and you protected your heart. The scripture at Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says, save God your heart because out of it, it springs life, right? So if life force is what's needed and life force is what God says, I want you to become visible because I want you to share words of life and speak words of life, right? But this out of it is coming from your heart that is under attack. You need to have a strategy. You need to have a system where you could take care of yourself and you can take care of your energy. So 
this is this is so I, I usually don't record when my son is at home just because I don't want you to have distractions. But this has been so heavy on my heart all day. I felt like I had to record it. I don't know. Maybe it's for somebody out there. But I know there's a lot of people who are starting YouTube channels, who are starting podcasts, who are starting coaching businesses, who are starting just services that are just so valuable. And I don't want you to stop. I don't want you to give up because of the negative comments. I want you to have the right perspective so that you can take care of yourself just as well as you show up to take care of others. So I hope this blessed you if you have not yet encountered it, but you know of a friend that has gone through or is going through a barrage of negativity, maybe some of these suggestions would be helpful to them and then you can share it. If you have any questions, if you have any techniques that have worked excellently for you, come on, share it with sister girl because you know, this ain't easy, right? But it's necessary and you are necessary. So I thank you for showing up for continuing to show up. And I hope you find some time to tell yourself thank you, okay? Because this is a very courageous act and I appreciate you. And you know what? The world does too. A lot of the people who they talk bad about after they die, their stocks, their everything goes up because sometimes people only appreciate you as their consciousness grows. Sometimes people don't have the consciousness, the awareness, the understanding or spiritual insight to understand your purpose. But it does not take away the fact that you have to rise when your spirit calls, that you have to show up and be visible and serve the people who are waiting for you. So I hope this inspired you. Much love. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the 300 subscribers. I am so grateful. You have no idea. And I will see you on our next.